Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my August wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about all the books that I read in the month of August. So I read 12 books in August, some of which I really enjoyed. Before I get into the books, I will just say that it is incredibly hot today. Um, I've had to shut the window so that you can hear me speak, but um, I'm going to try and make this video relatively quick because it is just very, very, very warm with the window closed. But there we go. Um, so let's get straight into the books. And I will start off, as always, with the classics. I read quite a few classics this month. Um, so first off, I read two Victorian books, um, both of which are new woman novels um, from the late Victorian period which I read partly like in preparation for um, making my Victober announcement video because um, my challenge for Victober this year is to read a piece of new woman fiction um, from the Victorian period and I felt like I didn't have enough recommendations. I definitely did, but I thought I'd read two more. Um, if you don't know about Victober, I'll leave my announcement video and the announcement video from the other hosts down below so you can find out more about it. Um, but the first one that I read was The Romance of the Moors by Mona Kerr. This is a late Victorian novel um, about a love triangle between um, a young man who works on a farm, um, a local girl who is in love with him, and a young widow who is an artist who appears on the scene um, and captivates the young man. And this is a very short novella looking at the relationships between them um, and kind of their decisions on what to do with their lives, I suppose. In some ways, I really enjoyed A Romance of the Moors. I feel like the characterization was really interesting um, and it was a quick read, um, a really enjoyable read. I feel like it was an interesting one to read kind of thinking of it as a new woman novel because it was very much a novel which was kind of recommending like female independence um, and women to have their own careers or to travel or to kind of do more with their lives but I feel like the undercurrent was very much be a strong independent woman so that men will like you more um, which was a bit <laughs> annoying. I find the new woman movement really interesting for being both like very proto-feminist and quite limited in some ways um, and I found the romance of the moors in general quite a positive read um, but there were just a few things that did sort of like make me roll my eyes. Um, at the very Victorianness of it, but I did really, still really like it, so it is definitely one I'd recommend. Um, and then the other Victorian book I read was The Woman Who Did by Grant Allen, which is another new woman novel, um, one I had more problems with, but also found like deeply fascinating. So this book is about um, a young couple. It's about a woman who is very much against marriage. She believes that marriage um, within the Victorian world she lives in um, is so unequal that she couldn't ever marry anyone um, and she meets this man and they fall in love um, and he says will you marry me and she says no because I don't want to ever get married but we can be a couple we can um, share our lives we can have children but I will not marry you and it's about the consequences of that decision um, and about how their lives kind of go on from there. I think it's fair to say that The Woman Who Did is quite a sort of like pessimistic novel like it's not empowering um, in the way that certain new woman novels such as The Odd Woman by George Gissing or Gloriana or The Revolution of 1900 by Lady Florence Dixie are um, like it doesn't have that same sense of like hope it's quite um, pessimistic in some ways so I feel like it's kind of complicated to read because on the one hand um, I feel like the central character who makes this decision um, is respected by the author and like the author thinks she is doing a good thing but also thinks no good can come of it from the world we live in and therefore maybe she shouldn't have tried I don't know um it's very difficult it's one of those books that I found both like historically fascinating but also like deeply frustrating in very many ways um and I kind of didn't love the ending so I don't know I had very mixed feelings about the woman who did and I think also within the new woman movement there are sort of um some people who are more radical than others and I think Grant Allen's definitely one of those writers who is very very critical of marriage but still believes that like all women should be mothers and that's like the natural state of womanhood um so there's sort of like quite a lot of limitations within um his proto-feminism I suppose um so I found the woman who did like deeply fascinating but also um very frustrating so is that a recommendation? I don't know. It was kind of very interesting, um, but I feel like this is probably one for people who are interested in the new woman movement and really interested in Victorian literature rather than like a general recommendation, I suppose. And then another classic I read in August was a French classic, um, Laura, A Journey into the Crystal by George Sand. Um, and this was 
completely weird. Um, I've been meaning to read something by George Sand for ages, and I saw this at the library, and it was very thin, so I thought I would get it out. Um, and it took me a really long time to read. I feel like the first half of August was mostly a reading slump of me reading Laura, A Journey Into the Crystal, um, and it was just very, very odd. I haven't read anything by George Sand before, and I gather that this is not typical George Sand, so I feel like I need to go and read some more George Sand. But Laura, A Journey Into the Crystal, is um, a sort of weird novel about this young man who um, kind of likes his cousin Laura, um, and then one day he's looking into a crystal, and then Laura appears to him as a sort of like angelic vision and says, come with me into the world of the crystal, and then they go into another world, sort of fantastical world within crystals. Um, but then later in the story, he ends up like going on an expedition with um, Laura's father to like find the world of the crystal, which is possibly somewhere near the North Pole. I think it was the North Pole, might be the South Pole. It was generally quite weird. It was very, very surreal and just very, very strange. Had like some things in common with sort of like Jules Verne, you know, in sort of like a fantastical expedition, but it was also like very dreamlike. Um, and I don't think I liked it, but I would also like to read more by George Sand in the future. So who knows? Then before I move on to contemporary books, I also listened to two Agatha Christie books in August. Um, Nick and I went on holiday, like at the end of August and the beginning of September. Um, and we had a bit of a a bit of an Agatha Christie binge, um, as you will know if you watch my holiday reading vlog. So in August I read two Agatha Christie's, um, two books that we listened to together, and then in my September wrap-up I have three more Agatha Christie's to talk about because we've been working our way through Poirot um, in publication order, which we were doing, and then we've had a big break, and then we got firmly back into the Agatha Christie Poirot groove. Um, so in August, we read uh, Murder on the Orient Express and Death in the Clouds, both of which we listened to. So I'll start off with Murder on the Orient Express, which I have read before, um, but Nick hadn't read before. Um, so we listened to this like while driving up on our holiday, because if I'm driving, I'd rather listen to something that I've read before. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed Murder on the Orient Express. It is so good. I knew it was really good. I have read it before, but it was such a delight to read. We just had a lovely time listening to it together, um, and it's just so good. So I highly recommend Murder on the Orient Express. This is one of Agatha Christie's Poirot novels, and as you might imagine from the title, while travelling on the Orient Express, there is a murder and Poirot has to investigate. And because of the way the murder's been committed, um, the suspects like must be one of the people on the train. So he has to go through like all the passengers on the train and work out who might be the murderer. And it's just one of the best Agatha Christie novels. Um, I love it very, very much. And then next we listen to Death in the Clouds, um, where Poirot is on an aeroplane um, going from France to um, London um, when someone on the plane is murdered and Poirot has to obviously investigate. Um, and again, quite like Murder on the Orient Express, it must have been someone who was in the plane, so he's going to have to go through all of the people who are in the plane and work out who the murderer might have been. I enjoyed Death in the Clouds. It was good fun, um, enjoyable to read as I find all Agatha Christie's Poirot novels. Um, it definitely wasn't as good as Murder on the Orient Express. I'm actually listening to it um, alongside four other Poirot novels um, as we did. I feel like Death in the Clouds is probably the weakest. I still enjoyed it but probably like one for Poirot completionists rather than people who are like picking the best of Agatha Christie to read. Then moving on to contemporary literature in August I also read this. This is Eleanor Knows by Claudio Pinero translated by Francis Riddle um, and this was a really really fantastic book. So this is an Argentinian novel um, which I think was not translated into English until quite recently. Yeah so it came out in Argentina in 2007 um, but it came out in the UK in 2021 um, and I thought this was really fantastic. I bought this because I've been hearing lots of good things about it on booktube um, and I also knew that it was set over one day which is something I really enjoy. This book tells the story of a woman called Eleanor. She's in her late 50s, early 60s I think and she has Parkinson's and this has caused a lot of changes in her life um, and very severely restricted her movement. A few months ago Eleanor's daughter Rita was found dead um, and this was ruled a suicide but Eleanor knows and um, she feels certain that her daughter didn't commit suicide. So in this book she goes on um, a journey to try and find um, a woman who she and her daughter Rita encountered many years before um, in order to get this woman to help her discover what really happened to Rita um, and everything kind of goes on from there. I'm trying to work out how to talk about this book because I found it very very thematically interesting but also a lot of the themes of it 
don't actually come to the fore until quite near the end. Without going into too much detail, one of the things this book looks at really interestingly is like bodily autonomy and like to what extent our bodies are our own or to what extent we can control them. Um, and this is kind of like tied up in Eleanor's um, struggles with Parkinson's, but also like with several other things in the book. And I feel like that theme um, and other themes connected to it were explored really, really well. I found this book really moving and powerful um, and really thematically interesting. So yeah, definitely one I'd recommend. Then by a random thematic coincidence, I read two books about Hollywood in August, which is, you know, not a setting or a theme I usually read about a lot, but there we go. These two books both looked at like prejudice within Hollywood um, in very, very different ways. So it's kind of interesting to read them close together. Um, so I'll start off with Not Safe for Work by Isabel Kaplan. This is a book about a young woman who gets a job as an assistant in a production company in LA. And it's a book about the misogyny and sexism and sort of like um, pervasive sexual harassment um, within the kind of film and TV industry in sort of like the era leading up to the Me Too movement, I guess. That is what the book is about, like, on the surface, and that is kind of what the book is about, but the book is also very much about the main character. It's very complicated, sometimes toxic, but very loving relationship with her mother, and I feel like that was done really, really well and was an element I really loved. I thought this was a really powerful book in general, um, with a lot of really interesting elements, and I loved the ending. I feel like the last few paragraphs were just, like, very, very, very well done. Um, so yeah, I'd really recommend this. I thought it was a great book. Then the other book I read about Hollywood was this. This is Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. Um, this is quite an unusual experimental book in a way that I really enjoyed. Um, so it is very much a book that is written in the style of the mediums it is exploring. So a lot of the dialogue in it is written out in kind of like screenplay um, format and um, a lot of the scenes are written as like montage or flashback or whatever. So that makes it a slightly odd reading experience, but I really, really enjoyed that about it. So this book follows a young man called Willis Wu, um, who like most of the Asian actors around him, um, is forever stuck playing bit parts in the background of a cop show. And it's basically about his life, both as an actor and outside of work, um, about his kind of identity and his career, um, and also about like um, the pervasiveness of Asian stereotypes within sort of TV and film in Hollywood. But within the kind of world of the novel, it's almost like the TV show that he's in is almost like the only thing that exists. I feel like that's maybe a, a useful way of describing this. Like it's got a slightly odd, surreal feel to it. I feel like if you enjoyed Radiance by Catherine M. Valente, you would really like this because although they look at very, very different themes. I feel like they have a similar writing style in the way they use like mixed media in a really interesting way. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. Definitely a book I would recommend. Then I also read this um, Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan in August. This is a very short little novella um, set in Ireland in the 1980s in the run up to Christmas. Um, and it's about a man um, and kind of his interactions with um, a nearby convent, um, which it becomes clear is a sort of Magdalene laundry, um, a mother and baby home, where the young women sent there are kind of not treated very well. And this man kind of has a particular perspective on this um, because his own mother um, gave birth to him when she wasn't married and she was very lucky and was able to keep her job um, and the woman she was working for ended up like helping to raise him but he's very aware that that would not be the experience um, of most unwed mothers at this time. This was a powerful strong novella um, that I really enjoyed. I feel like I don't have too much to say about it because it was just a short book that was really well done um, but yeah I thought it was really good and definitely one I'd recommend. Then moving away from novels um, I read this collection of short stories in August. This is No Edges, um, a collection of Swahili short stories um, um, from various different writers, published by Tilted Access Press. Um, and this was an interesting read. Um, I picked this up because I saw it um, in Book Bar. In fact, I bought this and um, small things like these, um, both from Book Bar. Um, I went there with Jenny from Bookish Shenanigans and the Anne Rose. I'll link their channels down below. Um, and we spurred each other on to buy books, as always happens. Um, and I saw this and I'd never seen it anywhere else and I thought it would be quite interesting to read some Swahili short stories um, so I picked this up. As often happens with short story anthologies with multiple short stories from different people there were some stories I liked more than others. There were quite a few of these stories I didn't massively get a lot out of and um, I think especially there were actually a few of the short stories which come from longer works. Like four of the eight short stories I think are actually extracts from a longer work um, which I think means those didn't really quite work as well for me. Um, my favourite story was probably 
probably the guest by Fatima Shafi, translated by Hassan Kasim. Um, I really liked that one. Um, and there were a few others that I found interesting as well. Uh, but overall, this wasn't like a massive favourite for me. And then finally, I have a play and a poetry collection to mention. Um, so I read this. I mean, I say it's a play. It's a very, very, very short play indeed. Um, it's a monologue, which is probably only like 30 minutes performed. Um, this is Seawall by Simon Stevens, which is really great. So this, as I said, is a monologue. Um, basically... Um, a man is telling you about his life and his relationship with and um, his father-in-law and his daughter and his wife. This is a very quick, powerful read. Um, I'd really recommend it. I also gather there is, um, I think there is a um, like live performance of this on YouTube. Um, so I will link that down below as well. Um, this was very quick to read and very powerful. And I feel like I can't say anything about it really without spoiling it. So I highly recommend reading it or watching it. Um, it's worth your time. And then finally, I reread Death Republic by Ilya Kaminsky. Um, this, like Seawall, was um, a pick for my book club in August. Um, so I reread Death Republic. Um, I have read it before a few years ago. This is a really fantastic poetry collection slash um, narrative poem like the poems within it are individual but um, there is a narrative running through this collection so it's almost like one poetical work I think but anyway this is a, a work of poetry um, which tells the story of an unnamed town um, in an unnamed country during an invasion um, and what happens when this town is under occupation. Early on in the story, um, a young boy who is deaf is killed. Um, and after that, all of the people in the town pretend to be deaf and they claim that they can't hear the soldiers. And it's about how they use that um, as a tool for power, I suppose. This is very grim and very tragic um, and really, really fantastic. I really love this. It's one of my favorite works of poetry um, and I really recommend it. Such a good read um, and yeah, very powerful. Um, I highly recommend this very much. So yeah, those are the books that I read in August. Um, lots of good reads. So yeah, let me know what you read in August. Um, what was your favourite book of the month? And that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.